Welcome to the Academy of Esports podcast. I'm your host, James O'Hagan, and I'm here today with Devin Jack and Andy Taphorn. They are the co-creators of a, actually a team of creators who have figured out, I think, in a lot of ways, how to take Minecraft and turn it into a competitive esport. A lot of times we don't think about Minecraft as being something that is competitive. It's usually uh, a, a, a creative platform for a lot of people. I know a student right now who I'm working with who is actually building a human cell in Minecraft. And I know my children play with me in a realm. We have our own realm in Minecraft. And that's kind of our, our, our play space that we have online. And a few weeks ago, I, I did the podcast about the Mind Fair. And just so happened that uh, Devin and Andy were at the Mind Fair in Schaumburg, Illinois. And I was so lucky to meet with Devin last week at TwitchCon. We, we kind of chatted for a little bit. And I wanted to bring them onto the podcast to kind of talk about their ideas around Minecraft and how they're using it in a competitive sense. Devin, Andy, thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you. So uh, Devin and Andy, uh, both, uh, this is kind of an interesting story to me in a lot of ways, not just because how you figured out how to take Minecraft, which again is more of a, a cooperative game rather than a competitive game, um, but you've created a competition that I don't think um, a lot of people have thought about in the ways to use Minecraft, but you also have very divergent backgrounds. Devin, you're a theater arts major at Mesa Community College in San Diego. Uh, you've been living there. And, and Andy, you're at uh, Southern Illinois Edwardsville. Uh, you're originally from St. Louis, and you're in the field of computer science. Two totally divergent uh, parts of the country, divergent backgrounds. How did you two end up with your team, because there's, there's more of you, I know that. How did you all come together to work on this uh, project and come up with this idea? It's kind of fascinating. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. It is fascinating. Um, and I think the biggest thing is, um, I was first introduced into the competitive Minecraft community about four years ago, um, when I was a freshman in high school. Um, I started my own team online, we'd compete in tournaments. And, uh, you know, I started off with a couple friends and we started growing through online people like my team. I've got a member in the Netherlands. I have someone in Spain. I've got people in in Chile. Like the the, the varieties of players through my team, which is called Team Rocket. We um we uh, we've got people everywhere. And um, throughout the years of playing, I always thought this has such big potential to make it to a live stage like CS:GO, like um, Overwatch, like these other games. Like our game modes that we play on our team-based esport game modes and um uh i am not the developer type of person like my friend andy is over here but i'm the person who um who uh can lead a team understands the business type of doing this kind of stuff so and i've got a lot of heart and passion for things that i love and um this is one of them and so um there was an organization before us who tried to do what we were doing um they, they were not successful a year later i something came up one day where I was like, we need to make this push now. And so I got some friends together. Um, Andy reached out to me too. And we started our team. Andy can join in here too now. And <laughs> yeah. Well, mm, go ahead. Well, Andy, uh, you know, this is, again, you're coming from the computer science side of things. Uh, Devin, I, I want to just sp speak really quickly. Having a theater arts degree, having that theater background, I noticed that at Mind Fair, you were, you were pretty much the front man. You were the guy who was up <laughs> You were kind of the MC of the stage. Um, those skills that you have, are, again, are things that we talk about in the Academy of Esports when we talk about uh, how we can want to have this gigantic ecosystem and give kids an opportunity to do things like shoutcast and be front of camera rather than just playing the video games. That's fantastic. Now, Andy, your um, role is a little bit different because, again, you're coming from the computer science background and kind of making this all work. How did you guys... Uh, come together to decide like, hey, we got to take this and run this and how do we turn this into something that's that can be replicated and used other places? Well, my computer science background actually came about because of Minecraft directly. Really? In, yeah, in 2013. So m my whole introduction to competitive Minecraft was actually an accident because I was on a live stream just watching some guy play Minecraft and someone advertised a competitive Minecraft server in the chat room. And I joined it, just, you know, I just felt like joining it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, wow, this is competitive Minecraft. It's so fun. <laughs> and on that server, I learned to code. I played on it for many years. 
and I've I've been working on competitive Minecraft since. And when I heard Devin was going to a real life convention, I was really enthusiastic because I'd previously done everything online at that point. Minefair was my first time I actually got to meet people in real life with Minecraft after now, I had like eight years or something. Now, Andy, were you the one who was there with your father? Yes. Okay, so you were. For those of you, obviously, who weren't there, though, Mr. Steve Isaacs, if you're watching this or listening to this, you were there. Um, again, Devin was kind of the front man, but Andy, I saw you. You were you were running around crazy. You were like in between machines. You were making sure everything was working. I mean, that was a heavy lift. You were you were doing the job of like four or five different people. It looked like at a lot of times. <laughs> it felt like it for sure. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Devin, from our conversation that we had in San Diego, your team put 600 kids through competitive Minecraft, a competitive Minecraft experience in that weekend. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it was something like that. And uh, what was so fascinating for us is, you know, we're going to this event with our, just our basic expectations of, okay, we have a 50 person tournament plan for Saturday and Sunday. Let's just please fill up that 50. And then next thing you know, we've got 300 per day who want to play on the stage. And so, um, you know, Andy's amazing at what he does. And, you know, so we're all scrambling to try to find ways to get as many players on stage as possible. And um, Andy's dad is also a huge helper in, in that aspect of getting people on stage in between tournament matches. Yeah, that was um, to go from expecting 50 and praying that you're going to get it filled up to 300 each day. Uh, again, for those who weren't there, what I saw was, um, it, you know, for, for kids to want to try things out, especially to get up on stage and want to try things out, that's not a typical thing for a lot of kids. Some kids have a lot of stage fright. Kids are not prone to want to get up on, in front of, of parents and peers and play a game like this. Your, your invitation to the kids coming up was excellent, I thought, especially being as young as you guys are. Um, and the fact that these kids, for example, my son, who is not one who wants to typically get up on stage, he's like, I want to buy the t-shirt. By the way, ladies and gentlemen who are listening, um, Comp MC, one of the ways that they do fund them going to these tournaments isn't that they are given a huge amount of dollars to travel. Um, they're self-funded right now. And what they're doing are t-shirt sales at the conventions that they go to. And my son really wanted uh, a t-shirt so that he could get additional gameplay time uh, to jump to the front of the line. And um, for people who, uh, if ever you see or want to get uh, a t-shirt, I would highly recommend uh, reaching out to these gentlemen and getting shirts uh, because uh, my son was so proud I, I know, Devin, you're probably looking for one right now. As you're yeah, standing. I got one. I, I, I got right here. It kind of looks like this for Chicago. Right. And so um, he was so proud to wear that. He was so excited to wear that. You guys, your team made such a positive impression on my son. And I'll tell you, you also made up, if, you know, serving 600 uh, children in that day, you made a positive impression on a lot of adults too. I hope you realize that. You know, that's my goal going into this um, is, you know, I, I'm very happy that the parents were were thrilled because um, we, we were at New Jersey Mind Fair and we did something small. You know, they gave us a small stage to run a little tournament and we could only have four people on stage at a time. So we only got like 20 kids and, you know, can't can never always give every kid an opportunity to play on stage, which really is unfortunate. But, you know, my main thing in life is if I can make one kid's day then that makes it matter for me. So, and I think we made a lot of kids um, weekends <laughs> at oh, yeah. my fair. Yeah, and, and, and I know you had me and Mr. Isaacs up on stage as well too. Um, and uh, while I stink at most video games and I was par for the course on this one as well, I can see the replay value. I can see the fun in this. So uh, Andy and Devin, if you would, because people are probably going, what's this game like? What's going on in it? Describe the game if you would. One of yeah, you, please. And Andy, go yeah, ahead, sir. So at Mindfair, and for many years, we've been playing this game called Capture the Wool. It's essentially like Capture the Flag, but it's a little bit different because Minecraft's key theme is placing and building, whereas in Capture the Flag, you typically don't edit the environment around you. So at Mindfair, we hosted this tournament with five people versus five people on some common maps that have been played for many years. 
and these maps are they're just super enjoyable and everyone there loved it and this isn't the only game mode too we have a lot i've I'm running a Minecraft server right now that hosts a bunch of other game modes besides it too, like Destroy the Core, which is there's a giant obsidian ball filled with lava, and you have to break it open, which is a little bit slow, and then right. it, it it leaks lava, and once the lava falls down a certain amount, then the game is won. There's other we also have Capture the Flag too, which is just like Capture the Wool, Team Deathmatch, King of the Hill. There's a bunch, and they're all really, really fun to play. Now, again, with this one, so in the environment, because uh, it sounds like the competitive Minecraft world, I guess, is a lot bigger than what I realize it is or what maybe other educators and parents are listening to, because it sounds like you're describing, you kind of touched on a little bit earlier about how you know, you're in a you were in a server and you were watching a stream and somebody popped up about competitive Minecraft and and you, you guys have been doing this for a while. It's, this isn't something you started in the last six months. I mean, you've been playing this for a few years, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so what makes your game, I guess, so different like, than maybe others? Or, is, or are there others out there like it? Yeah, um, I'm going to touch base on this one. So uh, I think the real thing for esports is it's really heavily relied on teams. And um, you look at a lot of Minecraft things, you've got 1v1 arena duels, which is like one player on one player. You've got like um, survival games and all these other things, which is a lot of one on one player. But the thing about one on one player is um, I don't really think that truly shows someone's extreme skills, especially in something like Sky Wars. You could accidentally get shot off by the, by the least popular player on the map because there's 12 guys in the same in the same like arena. Mm-hmm. Now for our game modes, you're you're, you're on. For, we we have decided to do a the five v five, which we did at Minefair as our beginner league for all mm-hmm. beginners playing it, and that offers one wool room to defend. And so that's five on five. Now if you're going to move up to, into the advanced league, that moves up to seven on seven, and you have two wool rooms to defend. So um, it brings a little more skill to the game of understanding that you have to defend two sides of the map and not just one. And um, uh, that brings the players to come together more to form this team esport that we've been trying to create. And and how big is your development team that you have right now? Because again, I know there's more than two of you and I saw other people there. Can you introduce those people and, and also tell us where they're located? I think where they're located is also important because again, Seeing you all, and I don't know if everybody was even at the Mind Fair in, in Schaumburg outside Chicago uh, a couple weeks ago, but who are your other team members that you have? Yeah, um, we, have, we have a team of four currently, uh, including Andy. Um, let me quickly go into my Discord PMs to see where we can get. Um, I, I know Silver Wolf, who um, I've played on, on a server that he's actually an admin for for a couple years now. A really good friend of mine. He actually lives in California, about 30 minutes away from me. Mm-hmm. Um, and he goes to UC Riverside. Um, I don't know his major, but um, so yeah, I kind of introduced him to the project. He said he'd love to help. And so he's um, on the development team as well. And then mm-hmm. other two people have, um, uh, Jason is one of them. He's one of our developers. He's been doing a lot of work on our upcoming website that we're going to publish hopefully this or next month. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see exactly where he's located in, in my stuff right here. Um, and then the last guy, um, his name is Alec, Alexander, um, and he's another nice web developer type thing. He, he's in Pennsylvania, um, and, uh, him and, him and Jason are two friends. They've worked together on a lot of project projects. And, uh, one of my other, um, administrators, um, Koja, he approached them cause he works with them. He's like, Hey, can you guys help out this project? They were on board. And so that's where we, we got our team of four. It's so interesting that you, you know, that usually projects like this require a lot of, of people working together in close quarters. Again, you guys are developing this uh, remotely. And again, talking about the esports ecosystem that you're developing, you know, Andy, I was talking to your dad um, a couple weeks ago, and he said one of the hardest things that, or one of the things he's trying to teach all of you, I shouldn't say it's hard, but one of the things he's trying to teach you all is how to market. 
and how to market this and talking about, you know, making sure you, you know, looking at all your costs. I mean, that's one of the things I want my scholar gamers to be able to do is learn how to market, not just the products that, you know, potentially they could be putting out there, but you all are marketing yourselves in a lot of ways too, because you are so young and because this is such a, a cool new idea. And again, you've got something that's really hot, uh, at least when it shows up, because again, 600 kids, that's a, that's a huge potential market that you have right there. Just that these kids are just willing to come up on stage and try this out uh, sight unseen without really knowing what exactly it is that they're getting into. Um, you've got web developers, you're talking about websites, you're talking about building servers, you're talking about gamer experience and the user experience and all those kind of things. You've developed t-shirts, you've got, you know, you, you've got your branding already out there. What is, I guess, where are you at right now as far as um, thinking more about a, a larger release? Because what, what I saw, my takeaway was, this is a fantastic idea. Not quite ready for the schools yet, because I know that there's a lot of, of teachers who would look at this and go, how do I even turn this thing on? How do I even get it started? But where are you at right now with at least, um, I guess, are we in an alpha stages, beta stages? What, where are we at right now with, with this? Yeah, Andy, do you want me to take this one or? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I probably, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, um, our plans for the next three months before 2020 are to get everything up and running to host a eSports Minecraft League in the spring for schools. We have, this number just went up today, we have about eight, I think our number is eight right now, school, school clubs um, who are confirmed, confirmed to play in our tournament in the spring. Um, which I think, you know, considering we don't even have anything right now, that's a pretty awesome number for schools to play in this league that we're going to host. Um, I actually, too, um, I approached my old middle school this week, to, went up to the principal, said, um, I own this e sports organization. Can I host a club here? He got me in touch with an advisor who was heavily interested, and so now I am the coach of a of an esports club in uh, in Lakeside, California. Here, it happens just that easily. It does. It does. I'm, and I'm glad that we have educators out there who are so supportive of stuff like this. And because his main thing was, does it bring more opportunities to my kids on this campus? And I said yes. And he said, that I'm for it. Diversify opportunities for student participation. Yeah. When you do that, we know. And I and I reiterate this all the time. When we when we talk about giving kids more opportunities to participate in schools, attendance goes up, GPAs goes up graduation rates will follow. So love that your principal did say that. That's fantastic and is supportive. Heavily agree with that. Shout out to Mr. Steve Mull out there. Um, but uh, um, yeah, so um, our stage right now is, um, you know, we came back from my fair and we're like, okay, um, we've got something going here for us. So what can we do now? And we're like, well, we had other plans before my fair and, you know, our team discussed and we now are we're shifting our gears towards let's get servers up let's get a website up and let's get everything up where people can go to to find information about where we're going to be next at a live event how they can compete in a school league or online league we plan on hosting both for people who are comp competing in a school league or if you're just like for example my team with friends who are all around the world we can compete in an online league through, through us too and um and so i guess um you know we're at a we're, in november december we're going to do some beta runs some beta little mini tournaments mm -hmm. and then by the beginning of the year we're going to start our uh, our process and our league um our goal is february for the spring uh, 2020 minecraft league and shiny you can uh, hop in here too if you have any developmental stuff you want to talk about uh before we go to that i just wanted to say that <laughs> a lot of a lot of this is really shocking to me and i imagine Devin as well because i've done all my minecraft online up to this point so going into mind fair i had no idea what to expect at all like i've our, my minecraft server target audience is teenagers and pretty much nobody there knows each other i've i never met anybody in person from minecraft until a month ago wow after, after playing it for many years so going there really shifted my perspective on this did it so did it feel like, oh my gosh, this is bigger than what I realized? Yeah. I should hope so. Yeah. Because, because I'll tell you what, my and you, if you listened, my perspective on the Mind Fair was, oh my gosh, this is so much bigger than I realized. But then I saw what you guys were doing and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is something that could be potentially really what, what was What was so big also is none of those players except for two knew what Capture the Wool was. 
they, they're what's capture the wool when they're playing and we showed them a video and they caught on extremely quick to this game mode but by the by the semifinals and finals matches they were playing like pros like no joke and i would say the average age of the kids who were playing were eight, nine, ten years old. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Is so that, these were. Yeah. These, this is something that you know. Again, I I get asked a lot of questions about how do we bring esports into our schools, but the the one that is kind of sticking right now is the middle school environment. Um, even a game like Overwatch or League of Legends. League of Legends, the complexity is very high. Um, it's a lot like chess, um, but Overwatch you know, especially a first person shooter, even though it's teen rated, isn't necessarily going to be ready for middle school. So, you know, pretty much the only games that we have right now, at least on a competitive th uh, uh, slant that can go into the high schools later, it really is Rocket League. And for years, I know people have looked at Minecraft and said, what can we do with this? This is such a cool thing. And, and I was hesitant at first when uh, Microsoft bought them out. Um, I, you know, and it, and thankfully that they did because at the time Minecraft was kind of dying a slow death. The, the yeah. numbers were dropping, and my and Microsoft really has done a fantastic turnaround of it. Where I think now it's bigger than it ever was before. People are coming back to that in droves. Uh, the Fortnite crowd is still the Fortnite crowd. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Apex Legends has come and shown up and kind of sat where it's at. Yeah. Um, so. You're, you're picking up a whole new generation of kids who are just, you know, again, at that elementary middle school age who just love this so much and they want to do so much more for this. The only thing I could guess I could say as far as a, um, I guess, as, not, as a, not as a criticism, but something that I would recommend that you look forward to going forward is how do we bring more, more women into the space? How do we bring more young girls into the space? Um, and, and something that you know, as you're thinking of building this out, um, I'm not saying that you need to necessarily have girls only leagues, but there are also places I would recommend looking at the brand new Mischief League. Uh, the Mischief League is um, a brand new uh, nationwide esports league that's built around non traditional games and non traditional gameplay, um, started by Jay Collins, uh, who is out in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, but other than that, guys, you've got something really just fun family friendly um creative and competitive it's 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 all put together right there That's yeah why i've been playing it for so long <laughs> i've been playing i've been playing this for six seven years now and i've not got tired of it yet it's yeah still yeah fun. and the replay value is high obviously oh yeah oh yeah people people in the peak of the overcast network which is the server that inspired Devin and i at least Mm -hmm. They they had a lot of people and many people put so many hours into practicing these game modes to get insane at it. And I, I think some of them are competitive esport players nowadays too mm -hmm. on other games because they played it so much. Which if this was a thing back then, they could have been a competitive Minecraft esport player. Um so I mean we had a we met so funny. One of the players who was on the best Overcast Network team, like these, this team would beat everyone out. What's so? What just for everybody who's listening, because I don't even know what it is. What's Overcast? What do you Overcast mean? Overcast Network is it was a network where you could play the stuff like Capsule Will Destroy the Monument, all those different game mode turn. Hey, yeah, you can okay. compete in tournaments and stuff. Um, but one of the players who um who I've played against personally um was at Mindfair, and he recognized Andy by his voice on stage, and he came up to him. He's like, he's like. Are you shiny the the owner of Stratus? He goes, Yeah. He goes, Wait, you guys are actually doing live stuff now? And we're like, Yeah. And he was he 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 played he played against us in that VIP match. Um I actually but, played with him. I was yeah. on his same team. Wow. Online. And yeah. was it that VIP match that me and Mr. Isaac sat there and just kind of like, all right, what are you doing now? <laughs> You're lucky you had uh, you had three professional Cup FC players to to kick to uh, to win. Those, those games but hey uh, i i i blew a defending match i mean they they capped the wall on me i think a rampage tunneled under my defense and uh and capped on me so yes yeah, that was a lot of fun so coming up you've got again just to re recap a little bit i want to make sure i haven't missed anything Devin and andy Devin, theater arts major stage presence uh san diego andy southern illinois edwardsville computer science behind the scenes and making sure everything is working right you both have a long history that goes back 
at least six or seven years in, in the Minecraft world. Um, this competitive scene is growing up and going to blow up, I think, uh, very quickly because, again, we're looking, as an educator, we're looking for things that we can use to provide an esports experience for our middle school kids. It's going to be safe and welcoming and, again, build around the constructive vibe. You guys are looking to start a league coming up here in the spring. Um, you've already got some some potential. You've already, I think you said eight right now? Yeah. And um, what – what is your hope? I mean, do you want to quit school and do this? Do you, what, what is this, is this, is this, is this getting to a point where you're just like going, Oh my gosh, this could, and you're kind of reaching that little bit of a freak out stage where you're like, Oh my gosh, this could be bigger than what I realized this could be. Yeah. I'm going to be honest here. Uh, when I was in Chicago mind fair, uh, we, we, we were uh, having some nice dinner with the team that Saturday night. And I was like, you know, guys, I don't know if college is a thing for me anymore. Um, uh, you know, kind of as a joke to them. But um, I mean, my main thing with my degree is I'm not going to college for anything other than I want to be a theater teacher when I'm older. And um, obviously, you know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing with comp competitive Minecraft and stuff like that. And for me, it's it's never been about um, me personally. Like, um, like yesterday, I had six soccer games I attended. I was refing, coaching, and spectating, supporting my players that I train privately and stuff like that. And so, um, and you know, I coach, I coach girls soccer too all the time. Um, that's like my, my, my cousin. And so, I mean, that weekend, I was like, man, I could have really, you know, th if this takes off, you know, what are we all going to do? So, we're, you know, we were super excited with the turnout. Um, I, uh, one reason I did not go to college when I graduated high school after I stayed local was because I was confident in my in my plans I was actually running another local company that I own in San Diego mm -hmm. and then I was like you know I kind of want to build that bigger so I'm going to stay and the next thing you know Comp and C took has taken a, a jump a leap of faith here with with uh, uh with marketing and stuff and so I'm like okay now this is now my big thing so you know, it's, it's been really overwhelming for us. Um, you know, at, at times, you know, my team's been like, okay, you know, everyone make sure we're all doing doing what we need to do to prepare, prepare for like our next meeting slash update. And so, uh, but uh, yeah, my, I've got a great, great team of people. Um, you know, Christian, who was at the event too. Um, Shahed, who, who was one of my longtime best friends. Uh, he's been on my gaming team for a long time. He, he, he's one of the most supportive people. He's always like, whatever you need, Dev, I'll be there if you need me to be there, whatever. Um, and yeah, so I don't think Shiny's had maybe the same thoughts as me about the college thing because he's—I think he's in maybe oh, la, oh, la, yeah. last last year of college for him over there. Yeah, this is my last year, and I'm on a scholarship, so I think I'm oh, gonna nice. continue. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, to I think I'm gonna that. finish. Yeah. yeah, I'm so close. I can see the end. But um, Andy, what about you? I mean, the, uh, you're, you're 21 years old, so this is this is the time of life where you could screw up and still move home. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still living home right now. Hey, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, they, they're not <laughs> kicking me out. I'm enjoying the <laughs> But, uh, but I mean, do you, do you see a future with this potentially as being a business, as being something that you, you step out of college and you're ready, you're like, you know what, I'm ready to, to go all in on this. Yeah, my Minecraft server that I run right now is still it's it's pretty good size for a Minecraft server, but it's not enough to make a living wage mm -hmm. with the expensive bills and the amount of people that donate. So I never really saw anything out of that. I, yeah, I, I, I that's what I assumed it was too. I, I never knew what it was like in person and how many people really enjoy this game and be willing to do this. And after seeing it at Minefair, I I think the answer to that's yes. I think it can. Well. Devin and Andy, um, as you build this out, as you grow your company, as you, you know, I hope everything works out really well. Please let me know what's going on in, in, in with all this so that I can help promote it so that I can help hype it up. Because again, what I saw, and I, and I want to speak to you guys personally here, what I saw just for how much my son loved the experience that he had with you guys really it, it, it that's something that's really important to me and i hope that for you're going to realize that there are other parents who feel the same way as well and i hope that you realize that there's a quote that i use all the time when i give a presentation it is you are forever responsible for what you have tamed 
And it's a quote from the book, The Little Prince. If you've not read The Little Prince, it, it'll take you five seconds to read it. It's a kid's book. But the idea is, is that as you go about doing this, make sure, because what you have is something that could be really good, be sure that you care for it, that you tend for it, and you realize the kids that you're impacting and the parent, you're also impacting the parents and the families as well too. For a lot of kids, especially at the middle school, because middle school is really tough, especially for a lot of kids. It's, it's the, it's, for some kids, it's the worst ages to be. Yeah, it really is. This can be helpful for kids to find their tribe, to find their connections, to at least have that escape of play that they really enjoy. So as you go about doing this, I just, I, I, I want to be very supportive of you and realize that what you have here potentially is something that can be really big and really impactful for a lot of young children. Yeah. Um, and that's what it's all about for me. Um, I know if you're, if you're an adult watching this, you're probably like, this guy is 18. What is he talking about? But I mean, I, I'm, I'm ahead of my age when it comes to understanding what the youth ha can impact on. And, and what I, I was just there a couple years ago. I understand what I went through. I understand what, what people that were in the same school as me went through. And um, just to, just to tell a story of what happened at Mind Fair with the kid and his parent. Um, and this is not to brag about anything I did, but um, good to share. It, it, it was, it was Sunday and, we, we, and we filled up fast again with our signups and the 51st, 51st person in line with kid and his dad and, uh, you know, repping his Minecraft sword all ready to play and everything like that. And I'm like, we're full. Um, you know, uh, here's what can happen. You know, you can get a t-shirt, which will, you know, get you that front of the line pass to do casual play. Or if you wait in the front row and if someone doesn't show up for their time, we can get you on stage to play. So, you know, we purchased a t-shirt and, um, that first match at 10 30 AM, everyone showed up so we didn't have that you know opportunity to play and then he said well when can I come back next to see and I said next match starts at 11 so next match is starting at 11 we're missing one player I look over that front row and I don't see him there and I, I told Andy and the team to hold I'm going to go find him around the convention so I left the arena and I was searching and this this is a bigger dad with an orange bright orange shirt so I know who I was looking for <laughs> and um, and so I you know I'm walking down the convention and five minutes later I see his dad waiting in line and, and his kid you know talking to some youtuber or something like that and I said I said hey Ed we got a spot if you want to play come on over now and he's yelling for his kid and they're running over to the stage with us to get on play and and he, he actually ended up winning the tournament with his team um and <laughs> so you know at, at the end you know I I was just showered with thank yous from his dad like this is not possible without you and like that and I'm like hey made the kids day, you know, that, that's what it's about for me. So. And, and yeah, Devin, Devin, uh, just so other people know too, you're not just some other 18 year old kid. Again, when I met you, we were talking about it. You, you coach kids soccer, you work with the, with kids in theater um, and you want to be a teacher. Um, so you, you, you've got a good head start, I think on a lot of, of people who are, who are trying to get into the education field as well. Andy, no slouch <laughs> to you though, because like I said, what I saw you doing and how you were helping kids on stage just get situated and organized. It, you were, you're, you, you've got something as well too. You've got, like I said, your team, people who were there, your team was excellent. You, you guys could not have been more professional. You could not have made parents feel more safe. And I think it's, it's really a, a testament to um, how much you care about and your passion for, for this competitive Minecraft idea that you guys are, are really doing a great job of putting out there. And like I said, whatever I can do to promote it, whatever I can do to help get the word out, I am more than happy to do that. So I appreciate that, Jade, because um, Steve Isaacs, um, what's so funny is how we got in contact with him is I sent a support email to Mindfair, not knowing what it was about our idea. And he sent me a number. He said, call me, we need a chat. And so we chat and I got people like you um, who understand um, esports and other areas who are helping us with this journey on how we can make this popular in schools and stuff like that. So I really appreciate you as well. And there's one thing I want to touch base on really quick too. You mentioned sure. earlier about the, the, the diversity in the women in, in the, in Minecraft and gaming and that yeah, kind of please. stuff. Um, and, um, you know, we, we have uh, in comp MC, we do have um, women on our staff team. Um, but for, from the community is they were they were rare in our community and there's girls girl gamers out there everywhere um so you know we're always we're open and at the next event we're hoping to get some with on our staff team there because then like you said if you know if, if girls who are there just want to want to play they see a female up there they might be more encouraged to go participate and um in our finals actually on sunday we did have two they might have been sisters i don't remember but uh, they had, we had two girls on the team that was in the finals um playing and and so um, 
you know, it's all about diversifying it for us, giving people, who, no matter who you are, be able to play in our tournaments. And I was asked this, I was at uh, the fall experiment this weekend in Milwaukee, and I was asked that question directly about diversity in esports. And you have to, there is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. People seem to think that, oh, if you just, if you just create this thing, kids are going to show up. They're going to even, you know, there's a lot of, and you can't, you have to go and recruit. You have to go to those yeah. places where, where it's, it's, it takes you, it may take you out of your comfort zone, but again, the experience is so positive that you're bringing, you're going to have to recruit girls. You're going to have to recruit children of color, families of color. Yeah. Um, if you have somebody in your fan, in your, in your team who, who speaks Spanish, that's going to be a, a tremendous draw. I mean, you being in San Diego, uh, Devin, you know that the, the Spanish speaking community is huge. Yes, and as you grow is. this out, you're going to need to, uh, again, this is, I'm not saying you need to, I'm, I'm, no, I'm offering totally friendly agree. advice, yeah, yeah. but it, the, again, as you start to think of what this could possibly be, the, 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 the bigger, I guess, the, as you bring in a, a diverse um, ideas and, and diverse uh, genders and things like that to your group, it's just going to make your experience so much greater than what it already is. And again, what you've got right now, it feels alpha. It feels like the start of something good. And it could go either way. I, 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 I want it to go great. I want it to go be amazing. It could go either way. But I hope that this is the start of something really positive and amazing. At least what I saw that weekend, it was positive and amazing. And I wish you guys the best of luck going forward. I appreciate that a lot. I, I hope we are successful as well. All right. Yeah. Andy, Taphorn, Devin, Jack, thank you both for being on the Academy of Esports. Thank you for having us. Thank you. That will do it for this week on the Academy of Esports. I've been your host, James O'Hagan. Esports are organized competitive video games allowing schools to redefine their athletic culture, diversify opportunities for student participation, promote good physical and mental health, increase collegiate scholarship pathways, and play games. We can never forget the importance of play. The mission of the Academy of Esports is to support these ideals. The vision of the Academy of Esports is for all students to experience the fun and joy of playing competitive video games. You may follow me on Twitter at Jim O'Hagan. That's at J-I-M-O-H-A-G-A-N and through the Academy of Esports account at T-A-O Esports. It's a great way to get the latest blog posts, podcast episodes, and news coming out of esports and education. And remember, you can continue your engagement by going to www.taoesports.com. You can also connect through Facebook at www.facebook.com slash taoesports. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to our time again next week.